you mentioned the idea of European unity, this, you know, Eurovision community, and that obviously involves cross-cultural collaboration. Songwriters write across borders. Um, songs have competitions open to everyone. But at the same time, there's been criticism that perhaps allowing foreign songwriters to write for another country kind of prevents that country from showcasing its heritage or its culture. I'm curious, where do you stand on this argument that there are too many foreign songwriters writing for other countries? Okay, so we have go, to go back to the root of, the, of this contest and what was the, the ideology, uh, I, the idea behind it. Like, what is, what is the purpose why this contest was invented? I think it was exactly this, that there is not a competition of nationalism, country against country. I never personally felt it like that. And I think most people don't feel it like that. It was like bringing Europe together through music, which is the universal language, sharing respect to each other. That's so why you cannot vote for yourself. You have to vote for somebody else and you have to appreciate the work of somebody else. Uh, and, um, and as a European Union, and which and, and generally is a union in the world, you know, countries should should be that's the easiest way to to bring them together in a peaceful way through music so in this field if for instance the song is hosted the contest is hosted in for instance in portugal but you hire a german company to help you for or let's put it like that let's put kiev now okay mm -hmm. in kiev in ukraine you hire Germans or Swedish people to make the stage. The sound guys or light is from Italy or whoever. The, then you start to search for choreographers who are doing the staging, who are actually, the staging is 50% of the for the voting, not for the songs that are released, but for the voting. So 50% are we songwriters and music producers and 50% the staging choreographers. So the staging choreographers, they're doing the best ones. They're doing three to four countries each year. From Sweden are most of them, but we have from Austria, some we have from Ukraine, some we have some from uh, Italy. So you, they're doing for all these countries. This is, by the way, how I met Sasha Jean-Baptiste, because we were a jury in Georgia for a Georgia final, me and her. And she was, because she was doing for Georgia the staging, and and uh, so basically this is how I met her, for instance. This is how also we meet each other, you know, by working for different countries. So, but I have to say, I started working for my countries. My big successes were for my countries. So if somebody criticized me and symphonics for something, we, so basically what we have, Bulgaria 2016, if love was a crime. This was the start of my career in Eurovision. Before, I've, I had also something 2011 for Bulgaria. Again, I helped a little bit in some other entries 2015 and 14, but it was more behind the scenes in production or recordings. It was not as a writer, so more as a consultant professional. 2017, Bulgaria second place. 2018, Austria third place. And best song, uh, best composing, a uh, composer award for Bulgaria Equinox Bones. And after 2018, I started to get most of my, um, let's say, requests or proposals to, to work for other countries. So I started this by working for, even that is not, but this doesn't mean that if other writers started differently, that makes them shady. Because as I said, everyone behind the scenes, behind the artists who's singing, is from different countries there. And that's the point, and that's the beautiful thing about Eurovision. We're coming together from all countries together and making something that is meant to be bringing people together to music. And there is, of course, a competitive character to it, but it's not above the love that is shared between the people there. I can say this by being there and experiencing it uh, and making the friends and friendship. Because after this, the most beautiful thing you take out after Eurovision is the the, the the moments of joy, the moments of love, the new friends, and and the prejudices that you left behind. So this is the this is the the thing that made you rich out of Eurovision, not the the result if you're first or second or third place. And this is the answer to your question. Um, I don't think at all this is. I think it's it it doesn't 
effect. And it's not at all unfair that writers write for different countries because actually in the different teams that I work with, there are also a lot of different people from the different nationalities. We are also writing together. In the case of Bulgaria, it was, okay, me and Victoria were Bulgarians. We, can, we had also Lucas from Austria. Okay, I'm Austro-Bulgarian. And we had at the end of the, of, of the songwriting also Cornelia from Sweden added the bridge. So she also joined the song. So basically, this is what, what happened in the case of Bulgaria. So we are not one songwriter from one country is writing for all. No, we are <laughs> mixed with, with mixed songwriters in our teams. Okay, there is always a leader of a team or someone who works more or working after the songwriting session on the production. Okay, but in general, we are creative teams of multicultural creative teams. Mm. And, <laughs> and you understand? And that's the beautiful thing about it. That's the beautiful thing about it. And the, and if everybody else behind the scenes and the choreographers can work for so many different countries, why are we not allowed to be part of songwriting? By the way, also a lot of the songs happen on songwriting camps, which you don't know it's for Eurovision. And after that, the publishers are proposing them and they happen to come to Eurovision. And, and they were not meant to be for Eurovision, but somehow they pick the songs, adapt them to the artist. And, and then uh, this is also something you cannot judge anyone for. And uh, yeah, this is definitely, uh, the, for me, not, not at all unfair. And uh, if there is a rule that they should make a rule about it, then, then let's see how it's going to develop. If they really want it to be like that, let the EBU make a rule that all songwriters have to be from their own country, we can try to see. Maybe it's also better like that. I don't know. But I think it's going to lose this, the whole spirit of the whole contest. And uh, also, in my case, as I said, most of the songs and all my biggest successes I had for my two home countries, Austria and Bulgaria. And ultimately, countries, you know, can decide on their own. For instance, certain countries, some years say songwriters must be from this country. They must be citizens and other times they leave it open. So it goes back to your earlier point about giving countries choice, I think, um, and letting them year by year make their own decisions. Yeah, for me, democracy is giving free choice. This is for me democracy. And, and this is for me always, this is the way I've, I've been raised, uh, the way um, I, I've experienced fairness, always by giving a free choice. Everything else falls under dictatorship or a kind of like, being not like stubborn, not don't want to be flexible. And you know, there is this mm, very big statement that only flexible, if you're, if you're willing to change your position, if you're willing to reconsider your, uh, your opinion, that's the sign for intelligence. And that's the people who are going to survive always at the end. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, we all know this actually, that, 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 um, being stubborn and sticking to one or the same thing all the time leads to nothing. You know, even in a relationship, if we are friends now, which we are, William, I guess, <laughs> or I hope, <laughs> uh, uh, and we have an argue, and nobody of us doesn't want to change his state of mind, we will not talk with, with each other anymore, right? Mm. I feel like I'm in a TED talk. Keep going. <laughs> I just feel like what? A TED Talk. It's an instructive sort of lecture in a good way. People pay to see these. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Good. I guess you could say I have an uncomfortable question for you. One other criticism that's come up in recent days is that when people have multiple songs at Eurovision, they're approaching it as a business instead of, you know, the spirit of love and togetherness. Of course, the other argument is everything is a marketplace and everyone has to survive and feed themselves. <laughs> Where do you stand on all this? Is Eurovision now a yeah, business? So this is this is like uh, a, it's it's a good uh, question actually. Uh, there are several themes, uh, not only symphonics actually. Okay, let's say symphonics got more famous the last years because of these top ten positions, you know, and me leader I think was I'm the only one who's always in the old songs involved like because they're changing people coming and going you know but that's why they I guess they po point me out in that article also 
I know <laughs> what you're talking about. Uh, it, there is there was a very good answer of uh, someone I uh, under that statement. So first of all, I have to say that um, I start in this year. I can I can speak about this year. This year uh, I didn't at the moment I received the chance for Germany. I thought that this year I will do nothing for Eurovision. Uh, that that moment, Bulgaria was not back in the game. Malta had long time not won the X Factor destiny, so they will always decide, I guess, after that. And I was working uh, on other things, and suddenly there was a chance for Germany. So I I already had Germany. The moment I had Germany, which was I, I mean, the song was chosen, but but it was not announced because you had to produce it and everything. Suddenly, Bulgaria was back in the game, and and Jenny and Victoria is telling me, uh, you know, uh, maybe we're gonna use some of the songs of the camps and we're gonna use do new songs. So there was, like a, like I t- explained before, a big chance that they will not choose one of the song where I'm in, involved with. But working again for Bulgaria, working with an artist like Victoria, who I'm anyway working with, you know. Uh, this is something that it is obviously when they ask me to do that, I will do it. I mean, everyone would do it. Especially, and, and then Malta, then they chose Bulgaria, then I had, to, and Malta was in the very last moment, like two, like I said, uh, and I worked already last year for Malta. I like Destiny as an artist very much. And uh, the other songwriters uh, on the song, uh, they didn't have an entry yet. So all of them didn't have an entry yet. So, and they actually were saying, you know, we would like to have an entry this year. <laughs> so imagine I'm saying now, you know what? I have already two countries. Uh, sorry, guys. It could be considered that I'm getting a monopolist here. You know, so we had Caesar Sampson on that song. We had Bernarda Brunovic, who really, this woman is such an incredible talented singer, artist, songwriter, she needs to shine. And I really am mostly sad that she didn't have the chance to shine because there was the idea that maybe she could come on stage and as a backing vocalist or something, you know. We, there was many ideas circulating, nothing was 100% sure. So uh, we had uh, my Swedish colleagues, Joachim, Doug, you know. So basically people who, who of course, would like to have uh, a chance you know uh, also so this is my answer to it again we are multicultural songwriters and that I'm part of by writing on different songs and in one moment they are proposed this is not my my fault I'm not going intentionally of having as many songs as possible but at the same time since as I said choreographers staging choreographers are having so many different countries even sound technicians are working for so many different countries. Why should I not allowed to be part of songs where other multicultural songwriters are on it? On it? This has no, there is no logic behind it, and um, and and as you see, as the result, I didn't. We, all the three songs were in the potential top top positions. So that means I'm also not prioritizing any country. I'm giving my best, and we are actually, we are giving our best for each song. Um, And this is, again, the country's choice. Because if I'm working for Bulgaria and Austria, it's logic. Because I'm, as I said, these are my two countries, home countries. But if Germany is inviting me, and I'm anyway working with Ben Dolich, because I'm anyway working with him as an artist, and Ben Dolich says I want to work with Boris on this, and and or if Malta last is inviting me due to the successes of the Bulgarian entries and saying you know Boris we we would love to work work with you and they pick us a song and uh, this is again the decision of the countries it's not me like please please take my song you know it's not like that and also it's kind of like any workplace or industry if you have a relationship with someone and you do a good job they invite you back you know, with Malta and Michaela, 
They clearly enjoyed working with you, so it makes sense they would consider you a year later if you have a good song. Yeah, and still they tried. They tried. They, they called me last because they had tried with other writers before that. They had tried with with uh, local uh, composers, with uh, other foreign component co composers. They had even songs that they have recorded, and and somehow they were maybe not satisfied. And then they asked me, "Can you send last minute this song?" And and all the other writers on that song didn't have an entry yet, and they would love to be part of this Eurovision. And then me, imagine I'm saying no. I mean, what kind of uh, egoistic ignorant would I, would have been if I do this, you know? But on the other hand, now this song is wasted in that way, you know? And and uh, and and again, it would have maybe come out, not maybe for sure, with Bernardo's voice first. So she was willing to sacrifice her maybe very first single in her life. Uh, international single to give it to somebody else and then just because she loves Eurovision and everything and then it's nothing from this now anymore right. and then you're asking why songwriters are sad about it why we are at all uh, speaking out in times like this Be because the one thing has nothing to do with the other because this injustice would have happened even without the COVID-19 or with it. This is this this is the things how they are. We are not considered as an important factor. The songwriters are not considered as an important factor in the in the in this Eurovision world. Uh, they are considered as an important factor as long as you do the job, as long as you deliver, and they have the good song already and they have the content. This is the moment where we are important. But after that, you have to be like me uh, in order to survive there because I'm not only a songwriter. This is something I want to say also to the, to the people, the fans and everybody and to the some ex-head of delegations who, who still don't know maybe nothing about me yet. Uh, I have been not only the songwriter uh, of the Bulgarian entries, I've been a co-producer of the Bulgarian na national television. So I co co-produce the whole thing as an investment of money and as, as a responsibility and management for for uh, for, for um, uh, Equinox even like uh, even I would say participated in financing the staging too so so coming even to things that actually are supposed to be done so basically if you if you look at this, I'm not only here as a songwriter, I've seen all the aspects. And being in positions like that, I'm receiving, of course, more voicings, and I'm more privileged than other songwriters from my colleagues because they're fighting for accreditations. I didn't, <laughs> I'm not getting accreditation as a songwriter. I'm getting accreditation there because I'm a co-producer, I'm a manager, or somebody who, who is part of the, the decisions. I see. So some yeah. countries aren't even accrediting their songwriters to attend the competition. No, I all the time fight for the other songwriters from my teams. All the time, all the, they always want to be there. Everybody wants to be in the green room. You know, it's this green room thing is anyway not managed right because, first of all, artists, people on stage, head of delegation, songwriters, and then everybody else. This is how it should be right yeah and this is how it used to be basically this is how it used to be so now i'm as i said uh, i never had a problem of accreditation but not because i'm a songwriter because i actually had different more important fields outside of that where put me on a corporate <laughs> sorry <laughs> no that's, that's great it was great but uh, put me in a co-production co-production position so then, of course, I'm getting a, a accreditation, wow. but I'm having problems getting accreditation from my colleagues. Uh, sometimes I manage, sometimes I don't manage, you know. So, so this is the whole thing. Uh, what we're talking about, and and um, and if someone tells that I'm like a soul also comments that I'm only doing this because of myself and blah blah. Actually, if I'm wise and clever, I would shut my mouth. 
and continue being in good relation and not criticizing and doing it again three, four, five countries. If I'm that business oriented, if I'm that, because right now what I'm doing is actually harming my business. But I'm doing this with the, with the conscious because I don't want to be silent anymore. I think this is a time where people should be aware. EBU should be aware. Delegation should be aware of the of that there has to be a change. So I have the, still the statements of my colleagues. You just let me know when I can read them. Absolutely. I just want to say quickly, I think or I hope that your talent and the fact that you consistently deliver will make you immune to countries saying... Phew, because the fact is you produce good songs which help their artists shine and help give a good image to their country. So I do think, I do believe, certainly in many delegations, that they will still consider you because you are Borislav Milanov. <laughs> Thank you, William. I, I'm, as I say, if they don't do it, I will not be angry at them. I, and and I, as I said, for me, only in a, a continuing working for and with Eurovision should be like there has to be a change in some things otherwise unfortunately i will also lose my motivation for it mm -hmm. um which is basically not the wise business decision uh to the people who are saying that i that we are only about business which is actually also not a crime as you said it's it's but still there is mu much more than uh, and i can tell you for one of my colleagues even who was at the Malta entry, he said to me, you know what he said? Because he has also a lot of projects out of Eurovision. He he doesn't get really much money for all of this, but he was saying, you know, I really want this year to be part of Eurovision because somehow since I'm a child, we watched Eurovision and it's always such a great thing. And my mother, she doesn't give a f damn if, I'm, if I have a success of number one in the States but she loves knowing that I participated in one country in Eurovision and she's telling this to her friends and everything. So basically, you understand how, from where we come from. And if you, after you read the statements on all, of all others, you will understand from where we come from. And besides Symphonics, there is another, a lot of teams like doing a lot of, from a lot of countries. I mean, this dream team, I think they're called, they're doing for three countries or two this year. Then you have, this other team, like uh, where Laurel is part of, you know, uh, they're doing also for. So there is so many, and this is and how this, do these teams happen? Uh, uh, there is one leader, one founder, and he's collecting friends by working with them on things outside of Eurovision. And then you suddenly you you work together, and then you see, hey, that song that we wrote on that day, maybe we can use it for Eurovision. We're not sitting there now. Okay, we're gonna do now uh, monopolize Eurovision. No, we are working in general. This is how we do, guys. We work with writing songs in teams, multicultural teams. And in, if one of these songs fits or part of it fits and we have to rearrange, rewrite, adapt it to an artist we're using it or proposing it. Or in moments like this with Victoria, we're write, we, we writing it. Okay, the chorus was already there, but uh, we write it basically from scratch or for... Um, uh, like uh, uh, the song for uh, this year for um, uh, Malta, it was also basically written not for Malta, but we 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 wrote it with we finished writing with Bernarda uh, with the idea that maybe we can send Bernarda to Eurovision, not this year, but maybe next year or something, you know.